It's been a little time. I was thinking about if, if, if I could take everybody out to a coffee shop. Um, it might take all week long. Maybe, maybe I might arrange that. Take everybody out to a coffee shop individually and just like share what God wants from us. And so this morning, we don't have coffee. But uh, I will get to sit and just kind of just share from my heart. Being, being the last Sunday of the year, I said, wow, there's some things to reflect on about what God has done, what God is speaking, where God is leading us as a church. Um, and then I, then I also was thinking, man, it's, it's not only end of the year, end of the decade. Some of you guys, I, I'm a journaler, so I have all, all these journals of things that I've written over time. Uh, Facebook has neat, neat features. They have like memory features that you can look back and say, okay, God, where were you? Where was I 10 years ago? What was I speaking about? What were God, but what were you speaking to me? It's always an awesome time. I encourage you, if, if you, I, I won't say it's a godly trait, but if you aren't a journaler, I would encourage you to get a journal because it's it's encouraging to look back and say, wow, what, what did God say this year? What what is God, how, how has God led me? And so I, I like to keep track of that. What What is God saying? What are some scriptures that came to life to me? What are some um, moments that I've had with God? And as, as I was been praying over the last couple months for the church, you guys have noticed maybe uh, over the last couple weeks, even as we've been in, uh, in Matthew and we're going through that, that series of being like Jesus, there was some encouragement from Jesus that we would be people who do good, that act. That's been something God has been, been challenging me with. That I would be a person, that my family would be a, a people, that this church would be a family that not only have men, or, uh, and, uh, great amounts of faith to believe God to do the miraculous signs and wonders that we know we can do, but we would also be people who act on these things. That we would be people that do good in the city. That we would be people that live for His glory. That we would think outside of ourselves. And as I reflected on that, I thought to myself, I said, man, it's going to it's going to require some change maybe in some of us. It's going to require us maybe not to do stuff differently, but do stuff with different intentionality. And so as I was reflecting back 10 years, where was Andrew and Rachel? Rachel and I were married 14 years ago, so we were together 10 years ago, and we were church planners. And we had spent some time at Bible College. God had opened up a door for us to minister into a, in a small community. And it came around New Year's time, and a friend of ours, Paul and Lisa York, which you guys got to meet uh, about a year ago, they're going to come back in 2020 to encourage us again. But Paul and Lisa, they called Rachel and I up, and they said, hey, uh, are you wanting to go to Salt? And we're like, we had no idea what Salt was. Maybe some of you guys are looking at me the same way, and I don't know what, what Salt was. Uh, but we have another Kai Alpha person in the room. And so, yeah, so, so it was a Kai Alpha ministry, a campus ministry, where all of the college students from a certain region that are involved in the Kai Alpha were invited to do an end-of-the-year conference. And it just so happened that this year, they were going to have, 10 years ago, uh, they were going to have Sean Smith come. And maybe, I don't think, after, I don't think anybody... May know who Sean Smith is. Maybe one person. There you go. Richard's an old Kyle guy too. He knows uh, Sean Smith is a as an evangelist from California. And Rachel and I, we were very happy ministering in this small rural community, Conway, Missouri, about 1,200 people. We did an outreach one time, and we we're like, oh, cool. The whole city came to the outreach. We we're like, wow, this is really neat. I, I couldn't imagine the whole city of Madison coming to one Jesus centered event. But, uh, I still dream about that. But we got an invitation to go to this conference, and uh, we said, oh, that's good, but we're, you know, we're not working with college students. We're like working with farmers. Go to the, go and help them tend their cattle and uh, fix fences and things of that nature. And uh, they said, okay. Well, then we got a phone call a little later uh, from another individual that knew Rachel, 
and was involved in Chi Alpha, and they said, hey, if we pay your way, will you come to Seoul? So at that point, then I looked up Sean Smith, and I found out he's this evangelist, and the whole conference was going to be emphasized on the Holy Spirit and, and uh, the gifts of the Spirit and moving in the Spirit and, and walking in evangelism and signs and wonders. And I said, I think we could go to that. Like, that, that, that might be a good thing. Somebody's going to pay our way. We're going we're gonna to get a little vacation, uh, and, and we're going to hear from the Holy Spirit. I mean, like, we can't get anything better than that. And so we, we made plans, and, and uh, we went to, we traveled with a group from our Bible college uh, out to Indianapolis, Indiana. And let me tell you, it was amazing. The presence of God was there. As soon as, as, soon as the first, you know, strum of the guitar, was the first introduction, it was like, wow, I'm here, I want to meet with God. And it was at that point that we saw, it was uh, the first break. So after the first worship session, they played this video. Um, there's another person, Richard may know, but Sayaka um, is a Japanese uh, student that was part of Southern Illinois University's ministry. And so they had this video that they played right after, uh, right after the worship, they played this video. And it was a video that had at least six different internationals from all around the around the globe, one of them being Sayaka, we got to meet her and uh, still kind of chat on Facebook together 10 years now. But on that video, each one of the students, they were uh, telling their story of how, how they came to the U.S., they were studying at the university, They're, each one of them had a story of, of hopelessness or, or destruction or some way that sin was controlling their life, and then they met Jesus. And everything changed. And of everyone in this room, I'm sure we can tell the story of that moment we decided to follow Jesus and everything changes. And so at that moment, they, uh, in the video, they transitioned a really good video all put together, all edited nicely, right? Cutting from one testimony to the next. But then at the very end of the video, each one of those individuals began to pray prayer. And they were praying in their own tongue, so Saka was in Japanese, they had a Turkish guy there, they had somebody from India, they uh, had an African gentleman that was there, each one of them sharing, uh, or began to pray in each one of them in their own language. But then the video, of course, since we don't speak Japanese or Spanish or all the different languages, they begin to interpret the prayer underneath each one of the individuals. I remember that moment when the Spirit of God prompted me to answer their prayer. And they were praying, and they said, God, would, uh, the basics of the prayer, God, would you send laborers to the college campus so that more people can know Jesus? And I kind of mentioned it at the start, but Rachel and I had and a church planner. We were in this nice little church. They had started to grow. I remember the first time, old, older gentleman, 70 years old, a retired farmer, his name's Wally, and uh, we would go over to his house for dinner and, and meet with him and pray with him in his home. And I remember about six months into us being uh, the leads at the church, and Wally came to me, and he would, he would always call me Andrew. But I remember the moment that I was at the door telling them goodbye and Wally for the first time he, he shook my hand and he said, thanks for a good message, Pastor. We were, I mean, we were enjoying life. It was like awesome. Rachel and I, you guys may know, we had a house in Springfield, Missouri. We were, we were there. And the Spirit of God spoke to us at this video at this conference we didn't plan to go to. We didn't uh, even know anybody in the room. Uh, other, you know, Paul and Lisa were there. We didn't know anybody. We were surrounded by strange students. Um, and God said, Andrew Rachel, are you going to go to the college campus and answer the prayer? And we had all the excuses in the world. We didn't know anything about college students. We lived a life totally different than what a 
typical state university student would go through. We, I mean, we had our small little church, we were happy, we just bought a home, like everything in the natural was screaming, don't do it. But we couldn't ignore this urgency from our spirit, God saying, Andrew, Will you go, Andrew, Rachel? She, he would, Rachel would talk about times waking up and knowing this was the voice of the Lord. So we made it really difficult for God to confirm that this was what we were supposed to do. And we had actually written out in, in one of my journals at the time, written out this phrase. And we said, we are going to go to our church board, our advisors, and say, uh, this is what we feel God is doing. This is what we feel led to. And they were going to have to say, and I, I wish I had my, I couldn't find my original journal, uh, the exact word. They had to say word for word what we had written on the piece of paper. If they didn't say this exact statement, then we said, no, you know, that's our excuse to say no to this prompting. No, we're just going to stay here. Everything's peachy keen. We got jobs. We got everything in order. It's all good. Of course, you guys maybe have been around the church enough uh, that they said it word for word, exactly, like we had written it in the journal. Rachel and I looked at each other, and we said, okay, that's it, you know, we're going, you know, and uh, within two weeks, we, um, we arranged for another minister to come to the church. We switched things around. I had to get approved to be a missionary. We started our budget raising, all sorts of crazy Adventures begin. Why is God prompting me in this moment to tell you guys this story? I know this is what I'm confident of. I know that God is leading us as a church as a believer in Jesus to do something for his kingdom. Yeah. I'm confident in that. I know even from conversations that I've been having with people, the Spirit of God is prompting us in different ways that we can go and do good for God's kingdom. The struggle, or the opportunity, or the choice that we have now, and this is what, uh, when the next time I get to speak, if not next week, the week after, uh, I'm going to speak on walking in faith. I talked to the advisory board recently, and I told them, I said, the, the words that I know that God has for us as a church in 2020, is that we are going to walk by faith and not by sight. This is the hardest thing, especially when it came to that moment, right? We get this prompting, we see this video, we, okay, we were like, okay, we don't want to, we don't want to respond in emotion to it. So, you know, they played the video like three more times, and each time they, they played it, same spirit response. We talked to Paul and Lisa, we called up Dad, because Dad was pastoring here, and of course Dad was like, you know, even at that time, 10 years ago, Andrew, Rachel, when are you going to come up to, to help us in, in Madison and, 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 you know, and, and minister at the church? And, and I remember telling him, this is what the, the Spirit of God is speaking to me. Like, this is where, God, and, and Dad, and Paul, and all these authorities in my life, all of them were like, this is obviously what, the, what God would want for you. This is obviously the Spirit's leading. What are you resisting? And we still wrote out that word for word statement, you know, like, gotta make sure. We really gotta, gotta make sure. What is this? God, are you really telling me to do this? I wrote this really boldly in my, in my journal for this morning. Sometimes I get really difficult. Do I want to speak this to people in the room? Do I want to really like just ruffle everybody's feather, really like irritate you guys? 
hoping that's what happens this morning. We, I, you, are oftentimes the only thing holding back what God wants to do. Our faith, our belief, and if we look at our worship this morning, our belief in who He is, our lack of faith, sometimes if I honor, our lack of obedience to His promptings is the only thing holding back what God wants to do. moments is really neat that Denver this morning was encouraged by the fact that this year we saw more people come to Christ than last year. This year we saw more people baptized than we did the previous year. Do you know there's so many more lives that God wants to change in Madison? There's so many more of your neighbors there's so many more of your family members. There's so many more co-workers that God wants to bring His truth into their lives and transform them from the inside out, make them a new creature, give them hope, heal their past, deliver them, redeem them. And He wants to use you and He wants to use me. Sometimes the only thing that is holding back what God wants to do is our willingness to walk out in faith what He's prompted us to. I remember this when I was on the college campuses, we used to have a, a thing called God Table that I would organize. It's a uh, table that we would put out in the uh, student union, and as students would walk past, um, there's 40,000 students at Purdue University while we were there. As people walk past, we would just share with them who Jesus was. Being so, so in the seat of the truth of who God is, who Jesus is, who Jesus is, over and over. And you know what? We saw people come to Christ. I've had invitations where I've invited neighbors to dinner, or, or I've or we've, we've taken time and that one person that really annoys me and invited them out to, to coffee and share with them the truth of who Jesus is. And you know what? They received it. So we've got to understand this, right? And we and I speak about this maybe often in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that this that God is reconciling the world to himself. God's doing the work. But in his awesome plan of redemption for the whole world, he looks at individuals like you and like me. He says, you guys have a part. You have a part in this. Your voice. I'm, I'm going to use your voice. I'm going to use your gifts of hospitality. I'm going to use. I'm going to use your skill set. I'm going to use your imagination. I want to use you, and you guys are going to be my spokespeople. You guys are going to be the message givers. You guys are going to be the declarers of this good news. And it's it's on us. Are we going to be willing to? Do the good? Are we going to be willing to say the words? Are we going to be willing to be inconvenienced? Are we going to do it? And what I love about what God is doing in our church is He's, he's encouraging us and He's building inside of us that we're saying, yes, I, I want to do it. We're hearing His voice. I love the memory in, in, in Matthew or the story in Matthew chapter 14 of 
of Jesus walking on the water. I do like Peter. I already confessed, man. When I want to hear hear from God. I, I sometimes want to like. I'll test it. I'll write it down. I'll wait on it. I'll ask ten advisors. I'll you know. I'll, I'll study it out. Is this really what God wants to do? Is this worth you know? And I and I'll wait on this. And but Peter, I, I love this moment, right? He, you can turn with me, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. It, it says this. Um, immediately, so just after that, Jesus had fed the 5,000, uh, and, and verse 22 says this. Immediately, he made, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. And while he dismissed the crowds, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat made by this time had made it a long way from land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Here's one thing. Here's one thing. When God speaks to you, when His Spirit prompts you, you will know it is His voice. He never brings confusion. Take heart. Don't be afraid. Prayed in closing of, of worship, I was saying, man, God is with us. We don't have to be afraid. When we're adventuring, when God is asking us to do something new, maybe outside of our comfort zone, maybe something that we've never done before, maybe something uh, that, that seems above and beyond who we are as a person, Jesus' voice to us again says, take heart, it's not. Don't be afraid. What we have to do in those moments when all those other thoughts come fluttering in, we have to take those things captive and submit them to Jesus. No, it is His Spirit that is leading me in this. So verse 20, Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. I love Jesus' answer. Just one word, just simple, just straightforward, come. Maybe, maybe today, 21st century, if you would have said, just do it. <laughs> do it. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on water and came. This is kind of this is kind of the faith statement God is making to us as a church. Walk by faith, not by sight. Now there is this backdrop here. Jesus is already on the water. But take, but but this is where the I don't know, this is where the mystery of God, this is where the miracle of God happens, right? I, I, I'm on this boat, I, we're Peter, we're, we hear the voice of God, he's calling us, he's prompting us, he's telling us what to do, he's giving us opportunities. No. I never thought grocery shopping could be spiritual. Going and getting a can of food can be just as spiritual as me speaking the truth to my neighbors. So walk by faith, not by sight. This moment right between, between Peter hearing the prompting, hearing the instruction, and now walking in 
the glory of God. Walking in the miraculous, seeing him come through, seeing him as the miracle worker. All of a sudden, this moment is on whose responsibility? Peter knows the sea. He knows things sink. He had all the reasons why, no, I shouldn't do this. No, Jesus, it doesn't make sense. No, Jesus, are you sure? Man, Peter, in all the ways that he sometimes speaks wrongly, and maybe we can, we can discredit him, in this moment, man, Peter had some faith. Okay, you said come. Jesus, if it's you, tell me to come. Come. Okay. Okay. I'm doing it. I'm going to take a step out of this boat onto the water because Jesus, you said it was you. You told me to come. I'm doing it. This is this is where God is leading us as individuals, us as a church. God is prompting us to do good for Him, to to do in response to who He is, to be there for others, to speak for others, to, to do these things. And so God said it. I'm going to confirm it. God, was that you? And he says, yes, it's me, and I'm going to do it. Are you ready for that? Why? Because, remember, that, that's exactly what took place. In between that moment, in between the moment of Jesus saying, come, and Peter stepping out, Lifting the leg, putting it on the water, boom. Oh, he stepped into the glory of God. What did we talk about <coughs> two weeks ago? Right? We, we do good, we do the thing, and what others will see it, and they will what? Glorify the Father in heaven. They will see the glory of God. And now all of a sudden, everybody witnessed Peter walk on the water too. And we know, I can read the rest of the story, we know how, we know, we're probably familiar with this, right? All of a sudden he sees the things that are around him, he sees the chaos, and he loses faith, right? And, and Jesus, Jesus kind of says to him, you of little faith, why did you start doubting? Be a people of great faith. We are going to be a people that are led to action. Because we are a people of great faith, we are going to be a people who are led to action. And God has done us. I remember in that moment when God was calling us to go and to minister to college students, I remember all the excuses I had, all the reasons why I wouldn't be the one qualified to do what God has done. And so in order for us to be the people that, that make this shift, right, not just to be people who hear, not just to be people who receive, but to be people who act, I was thinking about three things that we need to that we need to kind of shift in our mind in order for us to be people who are willing to act, who act when God speaks to us. And, and the first one is, is this, that there is nothing, we gotta make this mind shift, there is nothing in the past that God can't redeem. This. Do you know, God, do you know this about me? I promise he does. And he's already been faithful to redeem it. Amen. You and I are new in Christ. We've got 
you not just call that. God, you know I'm dirty. You know I got this brokenness. I, you know I got this. No, God says, no, I, I look at you, and I have redeemed you. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, right? It's by his blood that we are made clean. We were once darkest, but God has made us whitest now. That 2 Corinthians chapter 5 passage I love that because in verse 17 it says what? That those of us, those of us who put their faith in Christ Jesus, we are new. The old, what the world has defined me of, who I, who I think I was, what, what used to define me, it's gone. And so now when God looks at us as his, as his faithful servant, he looks at us as his sons and his daughters, he says, no, you are somebody that I can, I can use you. You can be part of my kingdom. You are part of the plan. God knows who we are, and yet he still says, you are my daughter. You are created. You are in this for my glory. You are my vessel that I want to pour out to others. You. Oftentimes when I hear words from God, or, or sometimes when I hear words from God, I'm like, oh yeah, that's for somebody else. No, this morning receive this for you. You are redeemed. God desires that you would be in the game, that you would be a part of this doing good stuff, that you would be part of the action. You are, he didn't qualify anybody, he had no way, no, you're related to the bench, everybody else plays, you know, there's no second rate person, no. Those who are last, they're first, we're all equal, we're all his sons and daughters, and God says, I want to use you, because you are redeemed. Second mind shift that we need to make is that there is nothing in the present that God can't change. There's nothing that you're currently going through that God can't change. We have to make this mind shift that there is hope for me. How is this opposite that There is hope for you. Because if we truly believe this, John, right? If we believe, hey, there is hope for me, then when I see somebody else going through the exact same thing and in my present situation, instead of saying, oh, I'll pray for you, which I encourage you, do prayer works. But when all of a sudden I believe this for myself, that in my present situation, that God is there for me, that there's hope for me, let me tell you. Let me tell you, there's hope for you. I know this man, his name is Jesus. I know there's somebody that's going to take care of everything for you. Because in my present situation, I am completely convinced that there is hope for me. I don't have to stay here anymore, and you don't either. Amen. You see how that's different than just saying, I'll pray for you? Right? Pray for the individual. We've got to. Right? But if we are convinced, if our faith is convinced that God is able, that God is with me, that there's nothing in my present situation that is too difficult for him, all of a sudden, it's more than just, I'll pray for you. I will believe for you. I know that he is able. He is with me. There's nothing too difficult for him. Man, he's been with me through the thick and through the thick. Man, he's been with me through every situation. He is right here in the midst of my problems with me. And because of that, there's nothing that I can't face. And there's nothing too difficult for him. Right? It's a mind shift. It's a change. God is with me. There is hope for me in my present. Because then, when God calls me to action, it's not, God, come on, you're asking me to do that, but I, I, got, all, I got all this situation. No, it's like, man, I'm going to go there because I know God's going to take care of this even while I'm doing this. It's okay. God is with me. He's there in the present. God's taking care of the past. He's taking care of my present. And he's got my future, right? There's nothing in the future that God can handle. I make the mind shift. I can trust God. I can 
trust. Matthew chapter 6. Oh, I'm in Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, 25 through 33. Therefore I tell you, don't be anxious about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds in the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life. And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor, nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What will I eat, or what will I drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all these things. I'll just interpret that. So the unbeliever seeks all these things. And your Heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Seek first his kingdom. Seek first him. All the things of life will be taken care of for you. Right? We say this morning. He's a promise keeper. He's a way we can, He's got it all. Are we going to walk this out in faith? The promise is, this is what the promise is. The promise is that if, if we seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, if we seek after him, if we do what he is commanding of us, if we, if we do the good, if we, if we seek his face, if we seek holiness, if we seek all the things of this word, right? Everything will be added to us.
burning in me, rolling in me. Now, Andrew, are you ready? Are you ready to walk by faith and not by sight? And how many times do I convince or confess to you guys? I love to analyze things. I love to get things, and it often causes me to miss out what God wants to do in and through my life. There is much that God wants to accomplish in and through your life. The decision is yours. Are you going to choose to have faith and to walk in obedience? If you're ready this morning, Be a person full of faith and action. Faith that produces action. I want to invite you to stand this morning.